does rubric or standards-based grading have to do with student motivation? Everything, just watch and see. If you have students who put their earbuds in, their hoods up and heads on the desk when you pass out a worksheet or ask them to take notes in your math class, make sure you hit subscribe because this channel was made for you. I'm Juliana from Collaborate Ed. I'm a former South Central Los Angeles high school math teacher turned independent math PD facilitator. And I help teachers take the struggle out of teaching students who struggle with math. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing the background of my Rethinking Math Assessment Framework, which is a rubric-based style approach compatible with standards-based grading and traditional grading systems. You can use it with either. I'll be talking about the benefits of rubric grading, recommended reading, my own rubric to present conversion system, along with an in-depth look at my eight-part Rethinking Math Assessment Framework with an invitation to learn my step-by-step -step process. Let's dig in in the right place if you're a 6th through 12th grade math or SPED teacher, you're tired of spending endless hours grading, I'm going to connect that to the rubric approach, don't worry, you're frustrated with low homework completion rates, also going to show how that is correlated with our rubric style approach, you're struggling to motivate your most challenging math students, yep, it's related, you've been asked to use standards-based grading but don't understand how it would work for math, or you're curious about learning grading systems other than the 0 to 100% system. This might might not be the right place for you if you teach all accelerated and highly motivated students. I've personally always worked with historically underserved students who are struggling learners. And so if you teach highly motivated students, I'm probably not the person for you. You're not open to changing your grading practices, or you're not open to grading music using a rubric style approach or letting go of that zero to 100 point system. This probably isn't the right place for you. And it won't offend me if you stop watching. I do have a guide to go along with this. So if you head over to this link, bit.ly slash RMA framework, you can download everything that I show you in this video and learn a little bit more about the Rethinking Math Assessment Framework. So here's my first year of teaching. I was teaching um, integrated, no, sorry, um, math support and algebra one in South Central Los Angeles. And it was a rude awakening for me. I was confused why I couldn't just pass out a worksheet and my kids would get to work. Um, and year two, we got a new principal who required that we switch to this new rubric grading system that I was very unsure about. So he said that instead of grading zero to 100%, we're going to read this book and adopt this rubric system of zero to four. And we had to figure it out for our own subject area because we weren't getting any additional guidance on that. And it was overwhelming as a second year teacher a little bit, but I was also open to anything. After a few months, of implementing this system, I really hit my stride. I was completely obsessed with it. After this picture here, my, my first year of teaching, I taught one more year in South Central Los Angeles. Then I taught in East San Jose. And then I taught in um, just outside of Denver, Colorado and Westminster, where I live now. And I have used this rubric style approach in every single school, charter schools, public schools, and schools that use standards-based grading. Um, and it has just been incredible. And since October, I've been sharing this with hundreds of math teachers to do the same. And the results have been incredible. I can't wait to share them with you a little bit in this video as well. <laughs> I feel like I went from exhausted and heartbroken over my students' motivation to truly an empowered and vivacious intervention math teacher that students couldn't wait to get. Uh, if we dig in right here, I just want to dig in about what is rubric grading. Rubric grading is simply replacing the zero to 100% system with either a zero, a one, a two, a three, or four. Inside of the framework, I give you um, Dr. Marzano's basic rubric grading scale, um, and that is what this is based on. It's all based on Dr. Marzano's research, and this is just how we applied it to still needing to use, because in our grade books, aside from the standards-based school that I worked at, I had to still put in percentage grades. So how did I do that? That is all right here, the Rethinking Math Assessment Adapted Rubric. Um, you can see exactly what it means. And it has nothing to do with the number of questions your students are getting correct. It has everything to do with the type of questions your students are getting correct. So before we get too deep into rubric grading, I want to explain some of the benefits of rubric grading because there are so many and it's uh, just really something that is essential for us to understand. So um, I feel like student understanding increases with rubric grading. Students understand exactly which questions they need to get correct on their um, quizzes in order to pass the assessment. And this is extremely empowering and motivational. You might have the kids that never put in effort on their exams and then all of a 
sudden they're putting in effort because they understand what they need to do to get an A, a B, a C. Student buy-in is another huge benefit of rubric grading. Students find this style of grading to be incredibly equitable. We, not, we might not realize that our students feel that our grading practices are inequitable, but actually they might be, and our students might be feeling this way. They know that they need to do their best, try their hardest on the weekly assessments because they know it's everything. So they are bought in. I do not grade homework for correctness. And the reason I can let go of that is because of the power of this rubric grading system that I'm sharing with you here. So the student buy-in when they're actually doing the assessment skyrockets. Um, also student perseverance. That's something that we're all wanting, especially out of our students of who struggle. And when they get a zero on the rubric, it doesn't mean zero points in the grade book. It actually means a 50%. And this motivates students and encourages their perseverance because they'll never have to dig themselves out of an impossible hole uh, that we get into with the zero to 100% grading systems. And so they persevere through these problems because they know that even if they don't do great, that they can still totally recover their grade. So this is my eight part framework. You can see all eight parts right here. You can download your own copy with that link right there. Um, so inside of the rethinking math assessment framework, there's eight parts, the why, the research, the big picture, which I'm gonna show you next, uh, the question levels, assessment creation, grading and grouping, explaining it to students and summative assessment. This is my approach. This takes you start through finish through how to do this in your classroom. Like I said, I've helped hundreds of teachers to do this with incredible success. I'm gonna share some some of their stories with you right here in a moment. This is the big picture that I want to share with you. So this is how it all comes together. This cycle is why the system will save you time grading. You don't have to grade homework anymore. And I know that that's maybe a hard thing to let go of in my live workshops. It is something that teachers are asking all the time. So you really don't grade homework? No, I really don't grade homework. And I don't because the weekly assessment is so powerful. I know exactly how my kids are doing. I don't need homework. And they also weren't doing it. They were picking up their younger siblings from school. They were working jobs after school. They weren't doing homework. And I decided I didn't want to die on that hill anymore. <laughs> um, so the strategic weekly assessments, you, there are only five questions. Yes, you do need to give them and grade them weekly. So that is some grading to do, but you no longer have to grade homework. And um, there are only five questions. It goes incredibly fast. It will fly by. So you grade the weekly assessment using that rubric that I showed you at the beginning. Um, and it's based on their understanding, not the numbers correct. So that's how you grade. It. For student tracking, they actually track their progress um, on a little sheet and throughout the unit so they know how they're doing and exactly what their grade is. So they, they know, okay, I've been scoring twos. I've been scoring threes. And what's my goal? What do I want to score? I want to pass the class. I need to be getting at least twos. I need to be getting at least threes. So they check in with that every single week. They know how they're doing. It's incredibly empowering. And you can use this approach with any summative assessment. And by that, I mean a unit exam, a chapter test, a district benchmark. Um, I was able to use my district mandated benchmarks and all of the same chapter assessments that my colleagues were using. Um, and in the full workshop, I show you with actual exam examples exactly how to take any summative assessment and, you know, make it applicable with this framework. Um, but the bottom line is that you can use a rubric style grading approach with any summative assessment. So I do want to share these two books with you. They're linked in that um, handout that is there at the bottom of the page. So um, the book by Robert Marzano and the book by Dylan William, both of these are great ideas around implementing um, rubric-based grading and, and the importance of formative assessment and being able to change your lesson in real time. So you started watching this video because you're looking for less homework to grade. Maybe that appealed to you. So you can spend more time with your family and friends. Maybe you're looking for more motivation from your students so that you feel more fulfilled at work each day. Maybe you're looking for higher student achievement because seeing 80% of your students fail really doesn't feel good for you but it also doesn't feel good for them, right? And I think you can take this framework that I've given you, you can take the resources that I suggested to you, you can piece it together yourself, or you can get guidance with live support from an expert in me to implement it with ease and someone to ask all your questions along the way, because I truly want to see this work in your classroom. I'm not a big corporation. I am a solopreneur trying to make teachers' lives easier and increase our math outcomes for students. And I will give you all the guidance that you need to help make this happen in your classroom. 
So you can join me in the Rethinking Math Assessment Framework workshop today. I have the link there at the bottom of the page, collaborated with juliana.com slash RMA for Rethinking Math Assessment. And this is everything you get. You get access to the teaching slides. So you get all the instructional videos. All eight parts are divided into different instructional videos. You get a implementation guide. It's like 29 pages. It has things for you to print, to plan your assessments, your summative assessments, your formative assessments, to grade them. It has everything so that you don't get this wrong. You get invited to join my private Facebook group community where you can ask questions. Teachers are posting in there like, hey, these are this is the first time I'm trying my assessments. This is what it looks like. Any feedback you can post in our group about that. You also get a few slides to show to your students to explain to them how are we going to be graded in this class and what is this new grading approach that your teacher is taking. So you just have those ready to go. They come with closed notes for your students as well. Um, everything is there for you. It is literally step by step. So here's everything that you get with your registration into the Rethinking Math Assessment Workshop. You get in-depth videos. I am talking so in depth into all eight of these steps. Um, if you want to learn more about it, there's also more in, in that handout that I've been linking to. Um, you can see a little bit more about each of the steps, but I go very, very in depth. I think it takes you about 120 minutes to get through all eight videos. Um, you get access to the live Q&A call that I did with teachers when I did this live. So you get to see real teachers asking real questions and me answering them in real time. It's a huge, huge value. You get that implementation guide that I was talking about that has everything you need to do this correctly from the start. You also get invited to attend live. Whenever I offer this live within your registration period, which is 365 days, you will get invited to join live. So you can, you can join live. I guarantee that it'll happen at least once during your 365 days, but um, you'll always get invited. It might happen more. You also get invited to our members only Facebook group, and I'll give you a four hour PD certificate. Um, so those are all the things that you get with your registration. Check out that page to find out just what a true value this is. Uh, I can't believe that I've made this so easily accessible for teachers. It's just a huge passion of mine. I really think as teachers were asking me, how do I motivate my kids that struggle? Grading and assessment is what it came down to for me all the time. And this is what's going to help. Uh, so there's our in-depth look at the eight-part rethinking math assessment framework process. So that's linked there in your guide. Here are just a few things that teachers have said. I'm going to only read the bolded parts. I collected data on how many students were attempting more challenging problems before and after implementing the assessment rubric grading system and found that there was a significant increase in students who attempted challenge questions. How incredible. She teaches repeat students. Um, and because of the workshop, she has techniques that encourage all students to participate in her class. Like, how incredible. Like, hooray for Heather. That's amazing. So you're ready to have no more homework to grade and get back to your life, more motivated students. So you enjoy coming to work, higher student achievement. So you feel more fulfilled. Registering for this workshop will be a big step towards achieving this. Like I said, if you're looking to increase motivation, I can't say enough how it is about our grading practices. This is what Jen said. She just jumped right in. Like mid-year, this was October, she just jumped in. And um, she said, it has helped students knowing they don't have to get everything correct to still do okay in the class. It's more about knowing and less about the percentage. And she has found this to be so encouraging for her kids. So I truly feel that you and your students cannot afford to wait on this. I need you to ask your administrator to pay your way because I don't want teachers to pay out of pocket. Pocket. I do accept purchase orders to make that really um, accessible. And I want you to check out the website because that always has the lowest price. Um, and so check it out. And I, I know you're going to love it. I know it's going to be incredible. This was one thing that Katrina had said to me about her experience with the framework. I have been frustrated with the standard 10 point grading scale or zero to 100% system. Um, and she says, I have live formative assessment data every Friday that drives my instruction for the upcoming week. And so this is just has revolutionized her classroom and her students success in her classroom and it's just incredible. So you and your students cannot afford to wait on this. Um, these are all the things you get. Go check out the website. If you have any questions, I'm always just an email away. And thank you so much. Have a great day.